Hi guys, welcome to my channel where every two weeks I will tell you about people that I find inspiring, about interesting brands and valuable objects. I strongly encourage you to post your comments, share your opinions and of course subscribe to my channel. I love this brand so much and in my opinion it is for sure a trendsetter for the unique items. It has also brought several classic designs back to the mainstream. For instance, the iconic Prada nylon bags. So this time I'm gonna talk about Prada. Let's get started. Prada was created by Mario Prada and his brother Martino in 1913. It started a leather goods shop by the name of Fratelli Prada, which means Italian for Prada Brothers. Most of the items were imported from England. At that time, Mario Prada did not want any of his female family members to join the business. He believed it was the role of men to earn for the family. As fate would have it, his son showed no interest in the family business, so it was Mario Prada's daughter, Luisa, who joined the business. She worked for 20 years as successor to her father before handing over the helm to her daughter, Mucha. Fratelli Prada business took a turn when Mucha Prada met Patrizio Bertelli. He convinced her that she should change her business model and focus on making luxury luggage pieces. He also advised her to stop importing from England and make all her items from locally sources materials. That was a decisive point in the formation of Prada, the fashion as we know it today. When Mucha inherited the role to lead the company, the sales were around half a million dollars. Mucha has appointed Patrizio Bertelli as the business manager for Prada. This allowed her to focus on the creative aspect of the business. In 1979, Prada launched its first set of tots and backups. Mucha and Patrizio noticed that there was no awareness of the brand, so they understood the importance of branding and wanted to expand the business into the luxury segment. In 1983, Prada opened its second boutique in the center of Galleria Vittorio Emanuele. This was a strategic decision as the location had previously housed the very famous and historic London house. This new boutique got a lot of attention from the public and the brand of Prada has elevated into the luxury segment. Inspired by the success of the second boutique, Prada launched several boutiques in Europe, including Paris, Madrid, Florence and more. There was a lot of empathy. They were always chosen in upscale and prominent districts of the city. The product line was also expanded. Prada launched a women's clothing collection in 1989. It was an instant hit the public who appreciated the dropped waistlines and narrow belt design of the clothing line. It was a conscious decision by Prada to not have a prominent Prada logo such as the logo of competitor Louis Vuitton. Even though Prada was a luxury brand and was as expensive as its competitors, it stayed away from a logo as wanted to have a reverse snowberry or anti-status brand image. A separate fashion brand by the name of Miu Miu, which was the nickname of Mucha, was launched in 1992. It was directed towards younger customers. After a string of acquisitions in the 1990s, 
including shares in Church and Company, Fendi, Jill Sander. Prada has become the leader of luxury goods in Europe. Revenue had reached 2 trillion Italian lira. In the 20s and 2010s, the mergers and acquisitions slowed down. There was a decline in luxury goods spending in Europe. There was also a rise seen in sales of counterfeit luxury items. In 2020, Miuccia and Patrizio continued to be at the helm for Prada. They named the one of the top designers, Ralph Simons, as the co-creative director. So far, he designed many wonderful and unique collections. As you can see, Prada is one of the most iconic brands in fashion history and its name will still be in demand for years to come. Stay tuned, see you in two weeks, bye bye!